Hey everybody, this is David Bennett Thomas. I hope everybody's doing well out there. Uh, thanks so much for checking out my videos over the years. I'm always happy to be helpful in any way, um, to help you along your journey in music as you compose and improvise and practice and everything else that you're doing. So I thought I would try a new series here where I'm speaking to you and taking apart some of my own compositions just to give you some ideas of how I've put some things together in hopes that this will be helpful. So the first piece I was going to check out with you is called Edifice for bass clarinet and piano. This is a piece that I've gotten a lot of questions about because it's been played by a lot of players and they can sense when they play it that it's organized in some way. So I thought I'd show you how I organize this piece. So here we go. Okay, so example one here. Uh, this piece begins and ends on the note D, and that's the important pitch that kind of runs through the whole piece. And you'll see right away that I'm using these intervals that are expanding or contracting throughout this music. So the beginning is D. You can see the minor second, major second, and there's a the minor third, and so forth. So let's give a listen to that. Okay, so in example two, instead of having little two note pairs, as I did in example one, when I went from a minor second to a major second, this time I just go right from one note to the very next note with increasing sizes in the intervals. So you'll see at the beginning there, a minor second goes right to a major second, to a minor third, to a major third, and so on. And then it contracts from a perfect fourth back down to a minor second, but then it expands from a minor second out to the tritone. And you'll see the same thing in the piano right below it. And then you'll see more examples of pairs. Major second, minor third, major third, perfect fourth, tritone. And then the piano does little pairs also. Okay, so for example three, I had another what if moment. I thought, what if my left hand plays the chromatic scale while my right hand plays an interval above each of those notes that is a half step larger each time? So above the G, I played a major second. Above the A flat, I played a minor third. Above the A, I played a D flat, and so forth. And what I quickly realized was that my left hand was going to be playing a chromatic scale while my right hand played a whole tone scale. And in example four, I thought, what if I take that the next step? What if my left hand plays all whole steps and my right hand does an interval above each note a half step larger each time? And then I realized my left hand would be doing a whole tone scale and my right hand will be doing all minor thirds, a diminished seventh chord. In 
In example five, you might be able to guess what my next experiment was. What if my left hand does the minor thirds and my right hand plays a half step larger above each of those, which will make my right hand doing an augmented chord while my left hand does a diminished seventh chord? A combination I never would think to use in any other situation. Example six shows the same idea, but descending on the piano. For example seven, I take it one more step. My left hand does the major thirds, while my right hand ends up with perfect fourths. For examples eight and nine, you can see some harmonies that I formed using this idea. Chords built up of expanding intervals from the bottom up. For example 10, I thought, what if I try my hand at some mirror harmony using this idea? I knew I wanted the notes to converge on D, so I worked my way outwards and found a way to come in contrary motion, landing on the D. In example 11, you'll see that I wanted to use my expanding intervals to create an accompaniment part in the left hand of the piano. So you'll see that in different groupings, sometimes in groups of six notes, sometimes in groups of five notes. You'll see a chord in the third measure of the piano that has intervals that are contracting from the bottom up, and even the quick little 30-second note bursts in the piano that sort of interrupt the, the ostinato are also expanding intervals. Okay, so now for the last example here, example 12. This is the end of the piece where I want to sort of pull it all together. So my left hand in the piano there is doing the ostinato again, but it's getting reduced from five notes to four notes to three notes to two notes, all the way down to just the pitch D, which is the important pitch of the whole piece. And you'll see in the first bar there some chords in the right hand, which are also using these expanding intervals. Meanwhile, in the second system, the bass clarinet is also going from three sets of intervals down to two iterations, down to one iteration, eventually down to a single note at the very end of the music. So it's also winding down to its very essence. Uh, the term that gets used for that sometimes is liquidation, musical liquidation. Um, in the second system, you'll see that the Piano is playing a polychord, A flat minor over D minor, which is using expanding intervals, a polychord that I liked that I got out of using this system. It's also sort of winding down. So that first one in measure 156 begins on the minor third. Two bars later, I started on the major second interval. And then on the last line, I started on the minor second interval, always starting on the note D. And then for that last line there, the first measure of the last line, 
It worked out great because I started on the note D and then my highest note at the very top of my arpeggio there is also a D, which worked out great. Then I used the, that chord three measures in a row there in measure 161. And then to end the piece, I go back to the polychord, the A flat minor over the D minor seven, and the bass clarinet lands on the last note, D. And that's how it ends. So there you go. There's a little look at the inner workings of this piece that I composed. Uh, messing around with chromaticism like this opened up a lot of new colors that I probably wouldn't have found otherwise, all inspired by these little what-if moments. Uh, on a side note, there's some YouTube videos of the comedian John Cleese, where he discusses the creative process and speaks about being in the open mode as opposed to being in the closed mode. The open mode is where artists simply play with ideas for the sake of play, to have fun, to experiment without having some sort of immediate job to be done. Play for its own sake, as he says. He says that the most creative people play with ideas longer. They tolerate discomfort longer. They don't know what they're doing longer and give themselves more time to come up with interesting solutions. That lecture feels like a composition lesson to me. He says that the most creative types say what if more often, which gave me the idea for the title of this video series. I recommend checking out his talk, and I will link it below. Also, for further study in chromaticism, a real must-read is Lenvi's book on Bartok's music, where he shows how Bartok uses the golden section in the Fibonacci series to generate melodies and harmonies and form. It's an amazing book. I think you'll like that. Check that one out. And I figured that this idea of expanding and contracting intervals already existed somewhere. And years after composing this piece, I found this harmony idea in Slonimsky's famous book, uh, The Thesaurus of Scales and Melodic Patterns, which legend has it John Coltrane carried around for years and Michael Brecker. So Slonimsky gives pages of symmetrical ideas where he divides the octave up into equal parts. I haven't really spent that much time with it. But I found at the very end of the book something called the Pyramid Chord, and there it was, contracting intervals from the bottom up. I'm sure there are a lot more examples out there, um, so feel free to mention them in the comments if you'd like. Thank you so much to the amazing performers on this recording, Sarah Watts and Anthony Clare. You can check out the score video, that'll be linked below. You can also check out Sebastian Tozola's amazing video of a performance of the piece that he did completely by memory which doesn't happen too often for me. So that was really super cool. 
So thanks to all the other bass clarinetists who have been interested in this piece and have performed it over the years. I'm so happy you've enjoyed the music. You're a great blessing to me. I hope this video was helpful for you. Have fun composing. See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.